our uh, study of Laplace transforms. Uh, I'm sorry, last time there was an internet problem on the lecture got over 10 minutes earlier. Anyway, I will continue from where I had left. Let me start presenting my screen. Yeah, here it is. So we had uh, started studying uh, what are the uh, Laplace transform of uh, periodic function. Uh, before that, let me very briefly recall again what's a periodic function. So a function f is periodic if f of small t plus capital T is f t for all t. That means after every capital T, capital T remember it's a fixed number. So after every capital T, the function repeats itself. So sine t and cos t are two classic examples of periodic functions and they have period 2 pi. Uh, we have seen all these things, graphing these functions you must have been doing for ages. So graph of sine t looks like this, between 0 to 2 pi you see a blue uh, colored line. Same thing repeats all over. Periodic function means essentially I was still, what I was telling was this part repeats itself. Geometrically you can see like this. Algebraically you will write it as f of t plus capital T is f of small t. So this capital T here is 2 pi. Similarly with cos function also 0 to 2 pi it repeats. What you see the part of the curve in a different color it keeps repeating over every 2 pi. Yesterday we saw all this. And we also saw how to find Laplace transform of a periodic function. We, even though we didn't see any example, I gave you the formula. It says Laplace of ft, if ft, if f is a periodic function with period capital T, L of ft is 1 by 1 minus e power s capital T, integral of e power minus st ft dt, integration from 0 to t. Now, the important point which I was trying to emphasize yesterday was that in the LHS you see the integration is from 0 to infinity. This is the Laplace transform definition. The Laplace transform definition is integral of e power minus st ft where e is just from 0 to infinity. But here you see that infinite integral over infinite limits has been reduced to an integral over finite limits with this extra formula, with extra piece in the formula which is 1 by 1 minus e power st um, and this integration is from finite limits from 0 to capital T only. Remember this, this is a huge advantage uh, because we have just done away with uh, infinity uh, which is a major achievement. So <clears throat> proof of this follows from first principles but don't worry, nobody will ask you proof of this in your examination but you must remember this formula. What is the formula? The plus of ft, if f is a periodic function with period t, is 1 by 1 minus e power s capital T, integral of e power minus st ft dt, t varying from 0 to t, 0 to capital T. So let us see uh, some examples of this. So let me start with this function. I want to find Laplace transform of ft equal to t. So ft is t, but not everywhere, only between 0 and 1. And Beyond 1, what happens? f of t plus 1, I'm defining it to be f of t for all t greater than 1. This means clearly this is a function with period period 1, because after 1, it keeps repeating. f of 3 is same as f of 2, which is same as f of 1. f of 5.5 is same as f of 4.5, which is same as f of 3.5, which is same as f of 2.5, which is same as f of 1.5, which is same as f of 0.5 which I know how to do. So between 0 and 1 I know. Anywhere else I can bring it down to between 0 and 1. Let us see the graph of this function, how it looks. So as told, when t varies from 0 to 1, f also varies from 0 to 1. So and it's direct, f t equal to t. That means it's a line with slope 45 degrees, pi by 4. Uh, line segment from 0 to 1 comma 1 and now what happens to the next part that means what happens if I come to 1.5 what is the value of f of 1.5 f of 1.5 is f of 1 plus 0.5 I told f of t plus 
capital T is small f of t. So f of 1.5, I'll write by f of 0.5 plus 1, which is same as f of 0.5. f of t plus capital T is same as f of small t. So at 1.5, its value is whatever it was at 0.5. That means 0.5, the value was 0.5. So at 1.5 also, value will be 0.5. Similarly, at 1.25, whatever is the value at 0.25, it will be the same as 1.25. 1.75 it will be same as whatever the value was at 0.75. What I am trying to tell is this line repeats itself like this. So you take from 1 to 2 any value, the value at that point is same as whatever is the value at this point. This means how far it is from 1 that point, same distance you traverse from 0, whatever is the value of f at that point, f of this point also will be same thing. Similarly for 2, 3, etc, etc. So you can see graph of this function and you can see why it is called periodic function. It repeats itself. Here we are interested only in the positive part. So I have drawn only in the first quadrant. So this keeps repeating as you can see. So that's why it's called a periodic function. So uh, we have seen the, the function is periodic with period 1. So now uh, let us try to find uh, what is the Laplace transform. I have done the details here. I will not spend time on explaining this because this is just basically, uh, you can see class 12 uh, integration. So let me start. The for Because f is a periodic function, I have this formula. Laplace of f small f is 1 by 1 minus t e power minus st into integral of e power minus st f t dt 0 to t integration. This is the what you are learning now, third year. Rest all is just first year, the second year uh, PUC. So from here, what is FT? I just told um, FT is a function which is periodic function with period one. So capital T is one. I substitute that one by one minus e power s zero to one e power minus t. FT is nothing but t. So now I want to integrate t. I mean, basically I want to integrate e power minus t into t between zero and one. How do I do that? I return the details here. This is integration by parts. First function into integral of second function minus integral of differential of first function into integral of second function. You evaluated this. I've done all the dirty things on the, uh, you can see it on the screen. Please go through. I hope I've not made any mistake. Most probably I've not made any mistake. Uh, so because I remember the answer is something like this. E power minus s divided by s into e power s minus 1 plus 1 by s square. Please see the bulk of the your first third semester B portion is over one moment you write this formula. Rest all is your second PC integration. These kind of problems are very popular in the exam. So please give careful attention to these things. So what we have done is we have taken the periodic function which I showed you. That's by the way, the periodic function is also called uh, sawtooth function. Means you can draw a line from here to here. It looks like the tooth of a saw, you see. Saw meaning there is a saw. It's like a tooth of uh, saw. Because well, there are various versions of this. This is the most elementary one. So uh, sawtooth function, Laplace uh, of sawtooth function is what I have shown you for this particular one. And that is e power minus s by s into e power s minus 1. Uh, I hope I not forgot. Uh, this is a minus here. So we are typing mistake here. Uh, this is minus s. Let me correct it right away, otherwise I will not be able to catch this again. So this is minus s. Until here it was minus s. Suddenly I have forgotten to write the minus s. Okay, anyway. So th this is how you find the Laplace transform of periodic functions. Let us try one more example. Here I am trying to find Laplace transform of this periodic function. This is ft is 2t between 0 and 1 and 2 between 1 and 2. And f of t plus 2 is f of t. That means this is periodic function with periodicity 2. I know it's not very convincing. It will be convincing only when you draw the graph. And here is the graph. Here is the graph. How do I justify this? You see, between uh, 0 and 1, it looks t uh, function looks like 2t. That is what I have drawn here. Between 0 and 1, function is 2t. This is a, you know, 
y equal to 2x. That's what you have to know. Here, f equal to 2t. That's okay. And before, after that, between 1 and 2, the value is 2. It's constant. So between 1 and 2, it's 2. And afterwards, whenever t is greater than 2, means any number, t, f of t plus 2 is equal to f t. So here it is f of t plus, for example, f of 3 is f of 1 plus 2. So f of 3 is same as f of 1, etc, etc, etc. We have done this, so I will not waste more time on this. So this is a periodic function with period 2. And how do I uh, calculate its Laplace transform, which is what I have been asked. So I use the formula, Laplace of f t is e 1 by 1 minus e power 2s, integration of e power minus s t of t between 0 to 2. So I carry out this integration. Now, it's not, function doesn't have one single form between 0 and 2. So I break it up between 0 and 1 and 1 and 2. Why do I do this? Because functions have, function has different forms in different intervals. So this is a standard trick. So 0 to 1 and 1 to 2. I mean, in your PUC, if somebody had asked you how to integrate this, this is precisely what you would have done. So that's all we are doing now also. Only thing is there is a factor of e power minus this here. Okay? So you carry out this integration, I return it down here again by parts and things like that, by yeah, integration by parts. So the solution is here. You can, of course, one can simplify it a bit more, but I have done it like this. That's okay. This is another problem which is very popular with examiners because it looks scary, but actually it's very easy again. So just go through this carefully. What does this say? A square wave function, ft, with period a is given by this. Show that Laplace of ft is e by s into tan h, tan hyperbolic a s by 4. Um, this problem looks, you know, for a person who is asking question, it's very simple because it's just you know, very nice expressions and everything. But it gets scary. How to, how do I even, what do I, what even one is telling in this problem? You have to figure that out. What it is saying is, firstly, don't worry about the square wave function. First, think of this as a function. And let us see how does this function look. Uh, uh, what do I mean by that? You have to plot it. So observe what happens. Very simple. P varying from 0 to a by 2. Value of function is p. E. It's a constant. And p varying from a by 2 to a. Value of the function is minus c. The same as what was here magnitude. But sign is changed. And this is called square wave function. For obvious reasons. When you plot the graph. You can see why it is called square wave function. So this is a by 2. This is a. And this is a by 2. So from 0 to a by 2, value of the function is e. This is the constant. And a by 2 to a function is minus e. If this is e, then this is minus e. So the function looks like this. From 0 to a by 2, constant function e. From a by 2 to a, constant function minus e. And it keeps repeating. That's why it's called a square wave function. People in, uh, don't like discontinuous things. Mathematicians deal with it, but not everybody likes it. So you have to draw a line right? from here to here. And from here to here also you have to draw a line. From here to here, any function is there. From here to here, you draw a line. So it looks like a, a square wave. Do you see that? That is why it's called a square wave function. This is the graph. Clearly, it's a periodic function with period A. Because whatever happens from 1, 0 to A, same thing happens from A to 2A from 2a to 4a, etc, etc, same thing happens. So that's why it's a periodic function. So all I've done is to convince you that this is indeed a periodic function. So that's what I've sh shown you. Let us see that it is a periodic function by drawing its graph. I'll just show you the graph. And the formula is written here. It's pretty horrendous. I'll try to explain a little bit, not everything. Everything is clear from what I've written here. And I am assure you it's correct because I wanted to prove something and I actually proved it. So Laplace of ft, because it's a periodic function, I will use this formula. Laplace of ft is 1 by 1 minus e power st, e power minus st ft from 0 to t. This again from 0 to t means now t capital T is a. So I'll change, I'll replace capital T by a here. That's all I have done. Nothing else I have done. Now, 0 to a, ft doesn't have a single form. 0 to a by 2, it has one form. a by 2 to a, it has another form. So, I'll write that. 0 to a by 2 and a by 2 to a. 
how does it look from 0 to a by 2 it looks like e from 0 to a by 2 to a how does it look it looks like minus e so i am evaluating this so this is like e is capital e is constant so I can just pull it up. So I'll end up with integral of e power minus st dt between 0 to a by 2 minus integral of e power minus st dt between a by 2 to a. So you carry out this integration. I have not done the details here, but I'm sure you can do that. You will end up with this horrible expression. It's not horrible really, but it looks a bit scary. Where did you get this from? 1 minus 2 e to the power of minus st by 2 plus e power minus sa. And here there's one s also coming out. And already there was e by 1 by e power minus s, which are written as it is. Now, from here is when your problem starts. So, I mean, ideally, I would have thought this is the end of the problem, but I want to say this is hyperbolic tan as by 4. So, basically, e by s, I can see remaining term must be hyperbolic tan of as by 4. So, I have to manipulate this. So, I have written down the manipulation here. You see, this looks like 1 minus 2ab, where a is 1, and b square. e power minus sa whole by 2 whole square is e power minus sa. Uh, so, this is 1 minus e power minus sa by 2 whole square. And here, again, I'll have to do a little bit more uh, dirty tricks. I have to play dirty tricks here. 1 square, I will treat this as 1 square minus e to the power of minus 2 sa divided by 2 which means 1 square minus e to the power of minus sa by 2 whole square so that means this is like a square minus b square form which is a plus b a minus b into a plus b where b is clearly written on what it is now if one term will get cancelled out whatever remains you get this and now uh, by the way hyperbolic tan is hyperbolic sign by hyperbolic cos. So now as by 4, hyperbolic sign by hyperbolic cos, so it will be e to the power of as by 4 minus e power minus as by 4 divided by 2 in the numerator. In the denominator, cos hyperbolic as by 4. So horrible problem. But you should recognize these things. Uh, denominator is e power as by 4 plus e power minus as by 4 divided by 2. 2 2 gets cancelled and I'll be left with excuse me. I'll be left with uh, e power a s by 4 plus e power minus a s by 4 in the numerator, e power a s by 4 minus sorry in the numerator I'll be left with e power a s by 4 minus e power minus a s by 4 in the denominator. I will have e power a s by 4 plus e power a s by 4. But then this is precisely, uh, you know, you multiply a whole thing by e power minus a s by 4. And you will get minus e power minus a s by 4. You will get what you see here. So these are all basically some very elementary uh, and dirty uh, manipulation. That's all. So you can write down these definitions. Anyway, I written down all the details here. So if you don't understand from here to here, use the definition of tan as by 4 and try to cancel out and multiply divide by appropriate terms. So again, I want to emphasize, as far as your b is concerned, your b portion is over here. The moment you write L of ft is equal to 1 by 1 minus e power st into integral of this, where integral limits are finite limits, 0 to t, your b part is over. Rest all is just PUC integration and recognizing this function as hyperbolic time. That's all. Nothing else. Now, there is one more very important kind of function which will uh, keep coming, which we will keep meeting pretty often. That is uh, named after Oliver Heaviside, is a British electrical engineer. Uh, a bit, uh, you know, the notation is a bit. Uh, it is not very standard for mathematicians, uh, but he's an engineer and he's used it and it's of course very useful, so everybody uses the same notation. This is normally if I'm defining a function h, I'll say h of t, but here no, I'll say h of t minus a. What is a? a is any integer, any number, integer, any number. Uh, this function is defined like this, h of t is the independent variable and a is a fixed number, a is a fixed constant. H of t minus a 
is zero if t is less than or equal to a and it is one if t is greater than a you will see a picture in your mind so you have a number line and t is a running variable there a is some fixed number there if a t is less than a that means the running variable is less than a the value is zero of the function the value of the function is zero and moment it crosses a it becomes constant function one so this is called heavy side function heavy side is as i said is the english uh, electrical engineer and okay let's try to understand this graph a bit more by actually plotting this graph for say a equal to 2 uh, so that means i'm going to plot h of t minus 2 that looks like this h, remember h t minus a is 0 if t is less than or equal to a so that means a is 2 here so if less than or equal to 2 the uh, h of value of h is 0 if it is greater than 2 it becomes 1 so it's like a you know Till here, till zero. Of course, we are not interested in the negative values of t. Time positive always here. So, but just for mathematics sake, I return on the whole graph. But I won't do it all the time. Uh, this line till a it is zero on x-axis. At a equal to at t equal to two, the line changes. The graph changes. It changes means it becomes one. So it's like a, if you draw this line also, which is normally practiced in engineering, it looks like a step, you see, like a step, you're walking on this, and at this point, you climb up to the step. Afterwards, you remain there only. So this is called, it is also called unit step function. Unit because you have climbed up one, one unit up in the positive y direction. So it's called unit step function. Also called Oliver Heavy side function. So this is how H T minus two looked like. H T minus three, how would it look? Same thing, but up to three it would have been zero. Uh, after three it would have been one. H T minus five, yes, up to five it would have looked zero. After five it would have looked like one. So you can understand. For example, I have plotted here H T, which is same as H T minus zero, A is zero. So in this case, till zero it is zero. After that it becomes one. So that's, I mean, you might be wondering what is this weird function, what is the use of it? You will see the use of it soon. So step, again, let me recall, step function is defined as h of t minus a is zero if t is less than or equal to a and one if t is greater than a. It's like a switch which is on from a onwards and was off till then. You see here, uh, even in the data one, till time t equal to two seconds, the switch was, what are the switch? So let us see, let us take the example of a switch at your home or anywhere at a particular time t equal to two seconds i switched the switch on till then it was off that means till then there was no electricity passing in the circuit at t equal to two seconds moment i switched it on electricity started passing so but this, did the electricity start slowly and then move to some level no it just started randomly for that it starts so that means what there is a discontinuity here up to zero, up to t equal to two seconds, I did not uh, ha have any electricity. Just at two seconds, I switched it on, so I started having an electricity. Some signal here, it's a constant signal, it may not be constant always, it may be varying also. That I'll show you how to get the varying uh, function into this. So, this is the interpretation of step function that it is like a switch which is on from A onwards and was off till then. Clearly, this is not a continuous function. It is also called unit step function, denoted sometimes by u of t minus a. Instead of h t minus a, people also denote it as u t minus a. So let's un understand h through an example. Means we saw the graph of h, but let's see what use it is and how uh, it manipulates the functions. Let us check that out by looking through an example of f t equal to t, we'll sketch graphs of f of t will sketch graph of g t into h t minus 2 into f t. Remember in my first class I told we are learning, we have learned how to play around with functions. That means give me two functions, I know how to add, subtract, multiply all these things. Here I am giving you two functions. One is h t minus 2, another is f t. f t in this case happens to be t, you can take any function later, that's different. But right now for example, illustrative purposes, I am taking f t equal to t. So let us try to graph h t minus 2 into f t uh, and also let us try to 
graph ht minus 2 into ft minus 2. So these are the three graphs which I want you to observe carefully. Before I proceed with that lecture, if you want, you can pause this lecture and graph these, write down, uh, find the graphs of these three functions. It will help you a lot. In a minute, I'll show you. But I'll wait for three seconds so that you can pause the video and actually draw the graph of this. Graph of these, which are the these, ft equal to t, that you know how to draw the graph, gt equal to h of t minus 2 into ft, and kt is ht minus 2 ft minus 2. Let me give, before I show you the picture, let me give you some hints how to do it. ft equal to 2 is easy. This is not nothing but a straight line passing through origin with slope 1, ft equal to t. What are ht minus 2 ft? ht minus 2 means uh, till 2 it is 0. After 2, this is same as ft. That means till 2 it is 0. After 2, it is like ft equal to t. That means I have erased the curve that the function ft till 2. That's what it means. And this yeah, it looks more complicated, but actually it's easier. Ft minus uh, kt is till 2, of course, this is 0. So this is 0. After 2, what happens? This becomes 1. So after 2, this will become Ft minus 2. Ft minus 2 means t minus 2. Because Ft is t in this example. So after 2, it is t minus 2. That means 2 less than t. So that means whatever I had graph of Ft, it has come down by 2. Because it is t minus 2. Now. Ft is t minus Kt is t minus 2 after 2. So I hope you, you are able to draw these graphs on your own. But in case you could, here is the solution. So ft equal to t, you know, this is a well-known. I am drawing only for first quarter, positive values of t, non-negative values of t. And ft equal to uh, t is this. And then if I want gt equal to ft into ht minus 2, what happens here? Observe. H is 0 till t equal to 2. That means till t equal to 2, left, right hand side is 0. That means g of anything up to 2 is 0. That means g of up to 2 is 0. I, I should have ideally drawn here a 0 line here, but I have not done it purposely. So it's like erasing uh, ft. You see, ft was this, but up to t equal to 2, I'll erase that. You understand that? And afterwards, what happens? Afterwards, it is the same as ft. Means afterwards means after t equal to 2, it is same as t. ft is same as t. So gt is same as t after t equal to 2. That means in this graph, after t equal to 2, whatever is the graph, it will retain. But before t equal to 2, it will get erased. That's the power of this uh, heavy side function. It's like, you know, you erase. It's like you switched on the switch at t equal to 2 seconds, but actually you had switched on the switch at 0, but you had not let the electricity go there. Something else had happened and at t equal to 2, you let the electricity continue, but as if you had switched it on at 0. But normally it doesn't happen like that. How it happens when you switch on at t equal to 2, it is like you can consider that as t equal to 0 in the sense it's as if you are starting then. So to get that, we need this it's t minus 2 ft minus 2. So let us analyze this. This is what happens up to t equal to 2. Of course, it is 0 because h is 0. What happens after t equal to 2? After t equal to 2, this is 1. This is 1 means kt is equal to f of t minus 2 after t equal to 2. So after t equal to 2, kt is same as ft. ft means t. ft minus 2 means t minus 2. So kt is t minus 2 after 1. t minus 2 means I previously I had uh, this ft. Uh, now it has come down by 2 or I will say it has uh, moved ahead by 2. You see this is the graph of kt. Like if you want you can look at it from this angle also. gt is ht minus 2 ft after t equal to, but this function after t equal to 2 right hand side is ft minus 2. That means whatever was here has come down by 2. This was ft equal to t after 2. Now it is, I want 
After two, I want it to be t minus two. That means I want to bring everything down by two. See, I'm bringing everything here by down by two. This is what I. You can think of it like this, or you can think of it like this. F t, I have pushed it by two, pushed towards uh, positive x axis by two. That means I have delayed switching on the switch by two seconds. See now, if I had switched on at zero, this is how signal would have gone. But now, because I multiplied it by h t minus two and taken f t minus two, I will get delayed signal starting from t equal to zero. This is a very important uh, kind of idea in electrical engineering. Even in mechanical, even many engineering, whenever you need to change things, this is what happens. Like in electricity, electrical, you are studying when electricity is changing. You can also have examples where uh, you know gearless scooters. So the scooter has to change its gear depending on the velocity. You don't have explicit control over it. You have control over velocity. When the velocity becomes beyond something, automatically the gear has to change. So that is the kind of thing which these functions have applications in. So this we have done. Oh, one more example. Instead of f t equal to t, let us try f t equal to t square. What happens to f t equal to t square? This is the graph. Now, what happens to g t, which is t square into h t minus two? It's basically same as t square, but first two it's got erased because first two seconds h t minus two is zero up to two, so it is zero. After that, it continues as if it was like what it was before. Now, what is T minus two whole square into h t minus two. That is my k t. T minus two whole square into h t minus two. How do I get this? So from up to t equal to two, this is also zero. After t equal to two, it is t minus two whole square. That means I bring down whatever I had here. I'll bring down by two. That is what, like what you did in the previous case. Uh, or better. Idea is like this. You think of this as, you know, t square, which I'm pushing to the right by two. I'm delaying the signal by two seconds. Same signal, I'll give it after two seconds. This is what is k t. So what I'm trying to impress upon you is, given a signal, g t will give you after some seconds. K t will give you after some time. But signal as if it was starting at zero. That is the crux of this uh, heavy side function. Because we are not interested too much in understanding. I mean, we want to we want you to understand heavy side function, but we are not going to talk about mathematics of heavy side function. Only thing we want to know is uh, we want to find out Laplace transform of heavy side function. So uh, let's do that. So this is all I have told you. Physical significance of step function is that it delays the given signal for a time k. So let us try to find Laplace transform of uh, heavy side function. These are all very important functions in physics and engineering. Uh, so let us study them. Uh, study them. So Laplace transform h t minus a. How do I do that? So it's a standard. Just use the definition. And Laplace of h t minus a is. Uh, don't worry. They won't ask you this proof in your exam. But you should know this. It's very easy. Uh, Laplace of h t minus a is zero to infinity e power minus h t h t minus a. But I still as is zero to a, so zero to zero to infinity. I'll break it up into zero to a and a to infinity. Zero to a, this is zero, so this whole thing is gone. I have only from a to infinity. A to infinity, you integrate. You do your usual elements. Um, thousand times you must have already done this integration. Integral of e power minus s to dt between the limits. You'll get one by s e power minus s. This is the answer. This is what you have to remember. The plus of h t minus a is one by s e power minus a s. We have almost seen this before. For example, if a equal to zero, this is nothing but constant function one, right? H t is same as constant function one because I am interested only in the positive part of t for positive values of t. So I know for that what the plus terms of one by s. Yeah, that's true. If a equal to zero, you will get one by s. This we had already seen. So this, what we have done is slight generalization of the previous one. Anyway, what do I do with this? 
still it's not clear. Just Laplace transform of heavy side function, what do I do? I don't know. But along with one more formula, this becomes very important. What is that one more formula? Here I'm telling you. I, I had to relate to this uh, what I told you here. Uh, you see, this is the important thing for me. This one. This function t minus 2 whole square h t minus 2. That means whatever is the argument for h, for here also argument is the same. Whenever it is like that, I am interested in Laplace transform of such thing because it gives me the signal, whatever the function, but I have delayed by appropriate time. So I want to find Laplace of this. That is the, that is what I am looking for. So that, for that there is a formula. Again, I am not going to give a proof of this. Uh, it actually follows from first principles, but not as directly as you saw here. But it's pretty simple, straightforward. If you understand how does this f t minus a, h t minus a behave, which is what we saw in case of f t equal to t square and f t equal to t. You can try f t equal to sin t, what happens and things like that. Um, they are pretty interesting questions. So, in this case, uh, so uh, the, uh, what I want to tell here is, yeah, this is the formula which is important for you for examination point. Laplace of f t minus a into h t minus a is e power minus a s Laplace of f t. Here, what I wanted to observe is argument of f which is t minus a and argument of h which is also t minus a must be same. For example, if you write f t here and h t minus a, this formula is not valid. Then you have to change this. We will see how to do that. But observe this first fact. I want to find Laplace of f t minus a, h t minus a. It is like k t in my previous notation. k t was t square. Sorry, uh, t minus 2 whole square h of t minus 2, that kind of thing. Both this and this must be same, identical. That is when this formula holds to. So let's see what the upshot of this. If I know Laplace of f, then I know Laplace of f t minus a, h t minus a. All I have to do is multiply by e power minus a s. a is a constant here, remember. The upshot of this is if I know Laplace of f, I know Laplace of f of t minus a into h t minus a. Yeah, it looks very complicated, but it's not really complicated. You, you know, once you get used, once you solve a few problems, this will become your second nature and then you won't get scared. Initially, yes, even when I saw this first time, I was a bit scared, but get used to it. So Laplace, if you find Laplace of FC, normally exam, they will give you this kind of function, but it won't be f of t minus a, it will be f of t. Somehow you have to make it like f of t minus a, and then you have to find what f is that, and find Laplace of that, then you will know Laplace of this. I know it's a bit abstract, let me show you some examples. So proof follows from as usual from uh, 0 to infinity, you get equal 0 to a and a to infinity, 0 to a anyway at 0, so a to infinity, you add here and you get this. It's not at all difficult, but I will not do that. Let us pick up one example. That's what is the need for your exam and then that should make this formula clear. The question will seem so, somewhat be like this. This is a very simple one, very artificial kind of function e to the power of t minus 1 into h t minus 1. I want to find Laplace transform of this function. e power t minus 1 h t minus 1. This means what? Up to 1 second, this is 0. Because this is 0, so the whole thing is 0. After 1 second, it is e power t minus 1. Because h t minus 1 is 1. So, what is the Laplace of this kind of function? So, instead of writing down definition, we will use this formula. It's a direct application of the formula. Uh, you take f t equal to e power t. If you take f t equal to e power t, this is nothing but f t minus 1, I mean f of t minus 1. Do you see that? If f t is e power t, what is f of t minus 1? e power t minus 1. So here that is what is there. So this is f of t minus 1 into h of t minus 1. Oh, I want Laplace of f of t minus 1 into h of t minus 1. Let us see what are the formula. Laplace of f of t minus 1 into h of t minus 1 is e to the power of minus a is 1 here, minus s into Laplace of f of t. f of t I just said is equal to t. So I know Laplace of equal to t, but precisely what I have calculated here. Observe this again. I want 
And here it's very easy. Like here it's already given in terms of f of t. If you take equality, this is f of t, f of t minus one, and I have h of t minus one. Laplace of f of t minus one into h of t minus one is e power minus s into Laplace of e power t. When did I get this? This is the formula which was given just now. You should know this formula by heart. Only then you can do this. And then there are Laplace of e power t. I know is uh, uh, e, uh, one by s minus one. Laplace of e power t is one by s minus a. A is one here, so I get this. This is just really direct application of the. Just seen formula. This formula, what you saw, uh, Laplace of f t minus a, f t minus a, v power minus a s l f t. I will directly apply it here. Take f t equal to e power t, a equal to one. That's what we have done. In special, I would a equal to one. <coughs> you could have taken a equal to two also. E to the power of t minus two into h of t minus two. <coughs> Laplace of that would have been. E power minus 2s divided by s minus 2. Remember there are two e power minus a s here. There is an a factor coming here. So keep that in mind. Here it was one. Maybe I should have chosen a better example. This one is confusing. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, the return is correct. I'll just go through carefully. Let us do one more example. So here I want to find Laplace of t square into h t minus 2. This is like my g t. This is not like k t. See, this is like k t. This example is like KT. KT means KT is f of t minus a into h of t minus a. Here t minus a, h t minus a, both are there. But in this problem, I have t square h t minus two. This is like dt. It's not t minus two whole square. It is t square. Now I want to write t square in terms of t minus two whole square. How do I do that? Have you done that before? I want to write t square in terms of t minus two whole square. How do I do that? Very simple. Just write add and subtract two to it. So that means I want to write. Please understand this. I want to write p square in, in terms of t minus two. Why do I want to do that? Because my formula I know is for n of f t minus a h t minus a. T minus a a is two here. H t minus two you can't do any change there. You can't play around there. So here somehow I must write t minus two. This must be a function of t minus two. How do I do that? How do I do? How do I write t square as function of t minus two? So there's only one way: you just add and sub subtract and add two. So that means t square is t minus two plus two whole square. Clearly, you will not have any problems about this. Minus two plus two gets cancelled. It's the same as this. Now this is we treat this as a plus b whole square. That is a square, which is t minus two whole square, plus two ab. That means uh, two. Two into a, that is four uh, into uh, a is t minus two. Sorry, two into t minus two into two. So four into t minus two plus b square, which is four. So I just nothing much. I just expanded this as this t minus two is a and two is b. That's how I expanded it. So I write this down. Now why did now what is the upshot of this? Why did I do this? I did this because. I could write t square in terms of t minus two. You see, so if I consider f t as t square plus four t plus four, I will not write f t is t square. I will write f t is t square plus four t plus four. This is the expression I'm going to take. Then what am I supposed to do? Then I know t square is nothing but f of t minus two. That is what I have proved just now. That is how I was cheating. I wanted to do that, so I did all this manipulation. So t square is f of t minus two. I was supposed to find Laplace of t square into h t minus two, which means Laplace of f t minus two h t minus two. Ah, for this I have a formula because now f, of course, is no more t square. F is this. F of argument of f and argument of h are same. So my effort was. Trying to manipulate f, trying to cook up an f so that given function has argument same as that of h. That was the aim. So I did that. This is a probably new manipulation for you, or you may have seen it in your class twelve. So go over this carefully. Let me re <coughs> emphasize again. Let me repeat it again. This is. I have function of t. I mean, function t square 
into h of t minus 2. I want to find its Laplace. I can't write this as f t equal to t squared. If I write, what will, what will happen? I am asked to find Laplace of f t into h t minus 2. I don't know how to do that. I know if you give me Laplace of f t minus 2, h t minus 2, I know. So I want to write t square in terms of t minus 2. How do I do that? The easiest thing is just subtract and add 2 to t. Always this works. Um, mostly it works. At least for your examination purposes, it works. So t square is same as t minus 2 plus 2 whole square. Now I expand this as if this is one term. t minus 2 is one term. We call it a. So a, a plus b whole square, a square plus 2ab, which is 4 to t minus 2, plus b square, which is 4. Now, if I take f of t equal to this t square plus 4t plus 4, where did I get this from? This square plus 4 times the same thing plus 4. So that's why I get t square plus 4t plus 4. If I take ft to be this, we are expected to find what uh, we know if f of t minus 2 is same as t squared. That is what this line says. So, I am supposed to find L of t squared into ht minus 2, which is same as L of ft minus 2 into ht minus 2. For this, I know a formula which I am using e to the power of minus sa into L of ft. L of ft, I know. Here is ft. I know how to find L of this. Use linearity property. This is the plus of t squared plus 4 times the plus of t plus 4. I won't tell you how to do it. I already told you. But in any case, I have done it here. Please go to this. I hope it is clear. This last, uh, last exercise is not important. The whole purpose of this uh, problem is oh, you have to recognize that you have to write this in terms of t minus 2. And after writing, what is the function you are going to take? That is what is needed. And once you take ft, in this case t square plus 4t plus 4, I know how to find Laplace of that. And done. This is what I want to do. Go through this more carefully. Maybe I should show you one more example. I hope I have written one more example. You see. So this is the trick I was telling you. Is to write ft. In general, if they give you ft into ht minus a, you write this as gt minus a into ht minus a, where I throw away f and instead of that I'll have a g. So you, how do you do that? You write f t as f of t minus a plus a and use the definition of f to expand this. Sometimes you may not be able to, but don't worry, they won't give you such kind of examples. But the exam, in the exam will give you things where if you use the definition of f, you will be able to expand this. So let us, uh, oh, oh, there is no more example. Uh, let us see. There is one more. So. Uh, maybe let me see in case there is time I'll give you more examples but I hope you understood what I'm trying to do here here all I'm doing is this what I, uh, I'm trying to make f argument of f and argument of x the same that's all I'm trying to do so this is another trick to be familiar is to observe that okay this is an important thing what does this say okay let's see here is a function uh, function it has two tukras, two parts. First part is less than or equal to a, how the function looks. Second part is how the function looks after t becomes greater than a. That's, they are the two things which I am trying to figure out. Try to understand this. You must have come across these kind of functions in your practice. When you are doing continuity and limits and things like that. F of t is, has one expression when t is less than or equal to a and it has another expression when t is greater than a I, I didn't say they are continuous and things like no no it may be may not be then what i want to do is this is a trick which you have to be as i said you have to be familiar with you have to write instead of writing two different things i want to write one thing how to write one thing that is where heavy side function comes into picture it's just a notation you are changing your notations that's all so you see, consider this expression, ft is f1t plus f2t minus f1t into ht minus a. Let us consider this expression. How does it look? Let us see, forget about this left hand side ft. Let us consider this expression, f1t plus f2 minus f1 times ht minus a. 
So this is a function of t. Just focus on right hand side. Don't bother about left hand side. I know left hand side is f t, which is f one t if t is less than or equal to a, f two t if t is greater than a. That much I know. So now I want to say this is also the same thing. It means if t is less than or equal to a, what happens? t is greater than a, what happens to this right hand side? Of this expression, it means I want to see f1 t plus f2 minus f1 times x t minus a. What are its values depending on the value of t? So if t is less than or equal to a, let's first consider that. If t is less than or equal to a, what happens to x t minus a? That's zero. That's the definition of Hermitian function or unit step function. x t minus a is zero if t is less than or equal to a. So that means this is zero if t is less than or equal to a. This is zero means this whole thing is zero. Then the right hand side expression is just f one t. Ah, that's what I wanted. If t is less than or equal to a, it must be f one t. Now what happens if t is greater than a? If t is greater than a, h t minus a is one. If h t minus a is one means what? It is f two minus f one into one. It is f two minus f one. So I, the right hand side expression will look like F1 plus F2 minus F1, where this F1 and this F1 get cancelled, and I'll get F2. So if t is greater than or greater than a, I right hand side will become F2. If t is less than or equal to a, right hand side will become F1. Right? That is precisely what this F is. If t is less than or equal to a, then F1. If t is greater than a, then F2. So what we have done is we have not done anything. We have not achieved anything. We have not done any mathematics. We have just Basically manipulated. Instead of writing function like this, I will write the same function like this. That is what I have done. It's just a notational change. Instead of writing f t is f one t is t is less than or equal to a and f two t is t is greater than a, I have written it in one line. F of t is f one t plus f two minus f one times h t minus a. Means if a is less than zero, this whole thing is zero, so it is f one. That is what this is. If a is greater than, sorry, t is less than or equal to a, this is zero, so this whole thing is zero, so f one t. So that's what I want here. T is less than or equal to a, f t is same as f one t. If t is greater than a, this is one, so f two minus f one plus f one, f one f one gets cancelled, so I'm left with f two. So these two are same expressions. So there are not no mathematics in it. Just change the notation. That's all. But that has very deep implications. You will see. Maybe I should give an example and see. So let us check here. Huh? This is the example I was looking for. So f t is cos t for t less than or equal to pi. I have time. I have time. So f t is cos t if t is less than or equal to pi. For the other example, and it is sin t for t greater than pi. How does this function look? You must graph this function for your examination. Nobody expects you to know how to graph, but if you don't know how to graph these functions, you'll be in trouble. So please learn to graph these functions. So let us sketch the graph. Here is the graph. So t less than between zero and pi, it is cos t. That means zero and pi, the cos cos zero is one, cos pi by two is zero, cos pi is minus one. So this is the cos curve. And after pi. T is uh, f is sine t, uh, so that means after pi, sine pi is zero, and after pi, sine becomes negative till it reaches two pi. And then again, the usual sine curve which you know well. Uh, so this is the curve, and you should keep this in mind. This is how the curve looks like. Clearly, there is a discontinuity at pi. The left hand limit and the right hand limits are not the same. Uh, so. By the previous trick, I know that if f t is cos t for t less than or equal to pi and sin t for t greater than pi, I can write f t as cos t plus sin t minus cos t into h of t minus pi. Because if t is less than or equal to pi, this is zero, so I will get cos t. If less than or equal to pi, I get cos t. If t is greater than pi, this will be Become one. I get cos t plus sin t minus cos t. These two cos t's get cancelled, and I'm left with sin. I hope it's clear. So f t. I mean, as I said in the previous slides, this function I have written it like this. What's the big deal? Now you will see the deal. 
I want basically I have been asked to find Laplace transform of this function. A priori, I don't know how to do it with this kind of you know one piece it is this, another piece it is this, how do I find the integration? Don't worry. So FT, if I write like this, I am being asked to find Laplace of this. Now there is no restriction on t, t can be any positive number. So how to find Laplace of left hand side, Laplace of FT? That's what I want to find. That is same as Laplace of right hand side. Laplace of right hand side, I use linearity. That is Laplace of this plus Laplace of this. Let us do that. So uh, I'm not going to do this. Mm, okay, sorry. But anyway, I'll tell you. Poorly, I'll tell you. Laplace of this plus Laplace of this. Plus Laplace of this means sin Laplace of sin t into h t minus pi minus Laplace of cos t into h t minus pi. This I'm expanding this question. Keep a paper pen and write down whatever I'm telling you. Uh, Laplace of this plus Laplace of sin t into h t minus pi minus Laplace of cos t into h t minus pi. This is what I want to find. So Laplace of cos t I know how to find. I want to find Laplace of sin t into h t minus pi. How do I do that? I just told you it is like Laplace of f t into h t minus k. So this also I must write in terms of t minus pi. Right? I want the argument for h and sine to be the same. That is when I can use that formula. How do I make it same? I cannot change argument of h. I can change the argument of t. So this is your standard uh, trigonometry which you must have learned in your class 10 or 11 or 12 or sometime. So I want to write both sine and cos in terms of t minus pi because here I will have one term sine t into h t minus pi. Another term is cos t into h t minus pi. Both, if I want to find Laplace transform, I must write something into something of t minus pi into h t minus pi. So, what is that something of t minus pi which is cos t? Here are the results which you might have known. If you don't know, just write the unit circle and figure out what these are. Sine t is minus sine of t minus pi because sine of pi minus t is minus sine t. Sine of pi minus t is same as uh, pi minus t, is same as sine t. So, sine of t minus pi is minus sine t. So which I have written it as sine of t is minus sine of t minus pi. Similarly, cos of t and cos of pi minus t. How are they related? Cos of t is same as cos of, uh, sorry, it is minus of cos of pi minus t. So pi minus t and t minus pi are same for cos because it's a function. So cos t is minus of cos t minus pi. These are all your PUC trigonometry. Don't ask me now why these are true. If you don't know, you can just remember this formula. So sine t is minus of sine of t minus pi and cos t is minus of cos of t minus pi. So now I use this Laplace of ft is Laplace of cos t plus Laplace of minus of sine of t minus pi h t minus pi. I just expanded this bracket and used linearity. Now I know how to find Laplace of sine t minus, minus sine t minus pi into h t minus pi. I can take minus out. Then ft is cos t, a sine t. So this is of the form Laplace of f of t minus pi into h of t minus pi. For that I know the formula. I have to just take out e power minus pi a or minus s a into Laplace of this function itself. That's what I have done here. For this also same thing I have done. Now I know Laplace of cos t I know, Laplace of sine t I know. Well, it looks like I have not written down the final answer but I am sure you can write it. This is cos t will be what uh, s by s square plus a square and the 1 by 1 square plus a square and things like that. You write that down. Uh, if you want, you can simplify. It looks like I'm not finalized, I'm not uh, finally written on the answer. That's okay. So, this is how you solve uh, Laplace transform of functions which are two different forms in two different pieces. In this piece, it was looking like cos t. And in this piece it was looking like cos t, this piece it was looking like sin t, both I can make it into one expression and write this Laplace of this as Laplace of some function whose argument happens to be t minus pi. For that you need ingenuity, means you have to struggle or you must know your past mathematics well. Only then you will be able to do this. And uh, same thing, you can generalize it to three pieces, four pieces, any number of pieces, I can uh, generalize this. So let me just explain this and stop today's lecture. If it is given, 
f is f1 t between when t is between 0 and a and it is f2 t when t is between a and b and f3 t will be beyond b so these are three pieces between 0 and a function has a form between a and b function has another form between beyond b function has yet another form now what i will do i want to find laplace of this if i want to find laplace of this i will write this whole thing is one expression. What is that expression? I have written it down here. f of t is f1 t plus f2 minus f1 ht minus a, f3 minus f2 ht minus b. You must remember, see the second line, this is important. a is strictly less than b. This is important for me. So let us check this. Let us check in three pieces. t first let it be less than or equal to a. If t is less than or equal to a, this is zero. So this expression is gone t is less than or equal to a, then it is definitely less than or equal to b also. So this is also 0 because ht minus b is 0. So both these are 0 if t is less than or equal to a. So then I am left with only f1 t which is what I want. Right? If t is between a and b, let us see what happens. t is between a and b, it is bigger than a but smaller than b. Smaller than b, so this is become 0. So I do not bother about this part. Bigger than a, so this is 1. So I will get f2 minus f1 plus f1 and f1 and f1 gets cancelled, I am left with f2, that is what I want. If is between a and b, I want it to be f2. Right? If t is greater than b, what happens? Oh, t is greater than b, t is greater than a, a also, because a is smaller than b. So h of t minus a is also 0, if t is greater than b, this is also 0. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, if, uh, what did I say? If t is greater than b, t is definitely greater than a. So this is 0 and if uh, b is, uh, t is greater than b, this is 1. Uh, you know, I'm saying something wrong. If t is greater than b, ah, sorry, if t is greater than b, definitely it is greater than a. a is less than b. So t is greater than b. Definitely t is greater than a. So this will be 1. In addition to that, this will also be 1 because t is greater than b also. So this is also 1. So I will get f1 plus f2 minus f1 where f1 will get cancelled and I will get f2. And here I will get f3 minus f2 where f2 will get cancelled with the, this f2 and I will be left with f3. That is what I was looking for. If t is greater than b, I want this function to look like, the expression to look like f3 which is what has happened. So this function looks like, so just go home and verify. It looks like f1 t if t is less than or equal to a because both these become 0. If it is between a and b, this is 0, this is 1. So f1 gets cancelled and you look like f2, that's what I want. If it is beyond b, both these are 1. So f1 will get cancelled here, f2 will get cancelled here and then left with f3 which is what I want here. So I can find Laplace transform. It will be pretty horrendous because it depends on what is A, what is B, and you have to write all these in terms of T minus A, T minus B, and things like that. I don't think I have uh, solved a problem in this course. Uh, I hope I will introduce that in the notes because I don't want to spend too much time on these kind of things. This is not Laplace transform, it is mostly manipulating functions. Uh, so maybe I'll put it up in the notes. Uh, I hope this is clear. And uh, we will stop for today and we will proceed with the next part in the next lecture. Thank you.